There's two ways of creating lightning for games. One is by hand, you create a flipbook animation, you basically draw frame by frame and you get awesome results, no doubt about it, it looks amazing. But you obviously need the skill and the patience to draw. So for those who don't want to draw, there's a second option and it's precisely generated lightning. You create an algorithm, in this case a shader, and then you insert a few numbers here and there and boom, kada boom, you get lightning generated by your computer. Which is awesome, it's great, it's useful and it doesn't take that long. So with that in mind, I created a few precisely generated lightnings in Unity, which are all available on my Patreon page in case you are interested, there's a link in the description. But I'm still going to share with you how to create this one, which is a good starting point. So let's jump right into it and let's see how to create lightning. And by the way, before we start, I made this tutorial a while back about lightning and thunder, which still has relevant information. We also created procedural lightning, but with particle system, with shuriken. So yeah, if it interests you, I left a link in the description. Now, the difference is that today we are going to use shader graph and VFX graph, which I have already installed in the package manager and I am using Unity 2020.1.10 in the universal render pipeline. So theoretically speaking, we could create an unlit graph and build the lightning shader into that graph and we could apply this to any mesh and that's it, but we would need to use the particle system. This unlit graph does not work in VFX graph. Instead, we need to start with a VFX shader graph. You can press right click and it is right here. You can create one, rename it, and then you can double click it to open in shader graph. Oh, and by the way, everything we are going to create in this VFX shader graph also works in unlit graph, in PBR graph. You can copy and paste, it's the same thing. And essentially what we are going to do for this lightning shader is to distort a line, basically. And in shader graph we have a rectangle where we control the wide and the eighth. So let's create two floats so we can control both respectively with these default numbers. 0.1 and 2. Now for the distorting part, we need a noise. We need to control the scale of that noise, so let's create another float for the noise scale. And we have to add movement to the noise, so let's create a time node, a multiply node, and then a vector 2 for the noise speed. For this to work, we need a tiling and offset node where we are going to connect the noise speed to the offset and then the tiling and offset node to the UV of the simple noise, just like this. As you can see, it's starting to move if we increase the noise speed, but if we connect this directly to our rectangle, it gets way too distorted. But there's a way to control the distortion amount, which is with a lerp note. This simple noise is going to be connected to the B option, which is completely distorted. And the A option is no distortion at all. So let's create a UV node. And then we just need the vector one to control the distortion amount. Let me just push it up here and then connect it to the T of the lerp. And the lerp goes to the UV of the rectangle. And as soon as we do it, if we start increasing the distortion amount, we are starting to get something close to lightning. Now what we are missing is color, so let's add a color property. I'm going to push it up here to the beginning and set the mode to HDR and choose whatever color you want and then multiply it with the rectangle. This goes to the color and then we can connect the rectangle directly to the alpha and that's it. Now how do we see this in action? Well, first we need to create a VFX graph. So with right click I'm gonna go to Visual Effects right here and choose Visual Effect Graph, rename it and drag and drop it to the scene. And if we press this Edit button, VFX Graph will open up. I'm gonna make some room, I'm gonna rearrange these and then you can press F to focus on your particle system if you don't see it. Right, so the first thing we need is to output a mesh. We don't need this particle quad, let's remove it we need a particle mesh. 
output part called mesh. As you can see, it is emitting capsules, which is not quite what we need. We actually need to change it to a plane. And now, as you can see, we have an input for the shader graph. And if you click it, you will have your lightning shader. Select it, and as you can see, we are starting to emit lightning. Now, there's a few things that are not really helpful. For example, the names of our properties have the default name. The way we change this is by going back to the shader and then match the name of the property with the reference. The only difference is that I add an underscore in front of the name. Once you have done that, don't forget to save your shader and you will have the correct names of the properties. So, for a lightning strike, if we go up here, we don't need the constant spawn rate. What we need is a burst with only one in the count. We also don't want this to move, so delete the set velocity node. And in this case, we want the lifetime to be always the same. So, let's turn off random in the inspector right here and set it to 0 0.5 for now. Now, to control the way it grows the lightning, the way it expands, we need a set scale down here in the output particle mesh. If we increase the Y, it gets taller. So that's basically where you control how tall your lightning is going to be. And if we open this up, we get access to the X, Y and Z. And to animate this, we need to sample a curve, which requires a time. For the time, we can feed it the lifetime of the particle itself, which is age over lifetime. And now in the curve, if we say that it goes from 0 to 1 and connect it to the Y, as you can see, it gets smaller again, but it's growing. Let me just increase the lifetime so we can see this in action. So yeah, it's growing, but it's growing from the center. In reality, as we all know, lightning comes from the sky to the ground, right? So we need to change the pivot of the particle. Let's use a set pivot and in Y, minus 1 will grow up. So let's set it to 1. And as you can see now, the lightning goes down. Perfect. Really nice. But it is way too small and it takes a lot of time to grow. So in our curve down here, I'm going to push this key more or less to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of the lifetime it has. And then with the right click, if we edit key, we can set the value to how high we want this to be. In this case, let's try 6. It still takes a lot of time to grow because the lifetime is 2 seconds. If we decrease it to a half a second, it grows faster. We got lightning. We are starting to see something, which is great. And now we can use the same technique to control the thickness, to control the white. And I'm going to use this curve, the maximum wide is going to be 0 0.2 and connect it to the wide. And as you can see near the end of the lifetime of the lightning, it gets thinner and thinner until it disappears, which is what happens in reality actually. It looks really nice. You can play with these curves and adjust it to your own tastes. Great, so we have lightning, it looks nice and you have quite a few options that you can control. So you can customize your lightning. Now I'm going to show you how to improve this so we can create a lightning strike. So first let's actually group this and call it lightning. And then with spacebar we can search for simple and choose the simple particle system. This is going to be for flash so we don't need the constant spawn rate. What we need is a burst with only one in the count. We can also remove the set velocity, it's not going to move. And lifetime it's not going to be random, let's turn it off and set it to 0 0.2. It's a quick bright flash. And for the main texture, we can choose the default particle. That's fine. And for the size of our lifetime, we want to go from 1 to 0, from big to small, like this. We can also remove the set color lifetime, but we need the set color only. And now it's a good time to create two color properties. One for the lightning color, because we may want the lightning to be brighter than the other things. So let's connect it right here to the lightning and then create another color. We can call it color 01. This one is still going to be blue with an intensity of around 2. And the other one, we can first connect it right here and choose a color that matches the previous one. 
As you can see it is not bright, we have this dark all around. That's because the blend mode is set to alpha, we can change it to additive. We can also increase a little bit the intensity. And that's it, we have a flash. But let's control the size with a set size for round 10. Nothing changes because the set size of lifetime is overwriting any previous value. We need to set it to multiply in the composition. Yeah, 10 is way too much. 7 seems like a good value. It's really up to you as well. We can group this and call it flash and then copy and paste it with Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And this one is going to be for the glow. It's going to live longer, so 0 0.6 should be fine. And it's going to be smaller like 3. Just so we don't see the beginning of the lightning, you know. Okay, that looks nice. If you want, you can decrease the intensity of the color by, by multiplying it with 0 0.5, for example. Right, moving on now, we want also to have a flash on the ground when the lightning hits the ground and then some particles fly. So we can copy and paste the flash, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, I'm gonna call it Impact Flash, but we need to offset this so it is in the same position of the lightning impact. So we are going to use a set position and offset to Y. I'm gonna set it to 1.2, okay? As you can see, it is right there at the end of the lightning, which is great, but it's firing at the same time as the lightning. We want to add a little bit of delay and for that we can select the wall spawn module and in the inspect we have the delay mode which we can set to before loop and it gives us this option where we can now say that the delay is going to be 0 0.2 for example if you want to work the timings really well you can set the play rate to something like 20 and it will play in slow motion and you can better understand what's happening and adjust the timings. So yeah, the delay should be something like 0 0.15, in my case, of course. Right, so we got the delay, we got the flash, the size is way too big. I'm going to decrease it to 2, and that seems okay, that seems nice. Maybe the set position is not correct. Okay, that looks better. Actually, let's create a float for the impact delay and another float for the impact offset, which is going to be minus 1.2, and the impact delay is going to be 0 0.15. We are going to connect it right here, and the impact offset, we can open this and connect it to the Y. This way, every particle system that is going to be part of the impact will have the same offset and will be in the same position with the same delay. And for the particles, let's create another simple particle system. Let's copy the set position of the impact flash by holding control and then while holding left mouse button we can drag it like this. And then connect the impact offset to the Y. And in the spawn we want a burst of something like 30 particles or more. If you want more you need to increase the capacity. Let's select the spawn and set the delay mode to delay before loop and connect the impact delay. Right, so it's at the same position and with the same delay. Now the lifetime it's going to be small, something like 0 0.6 and 1.5. We can also say that the select velocity is going to have these values faster in the Y, it goes faster up. Yeah, we can adjust these values later. Now let's change the texture to the default particle and the set size of a lifetime curve to this one, it goes from big to small. And if we want the particles to stretch, we need to set the orient mode to a long velocity. Let's also switch the blend mode to additive so they become brighter. And now we need the set scale to be something like 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. Let's make this random actually. And now this value seems okay. We are basically stretching in the Y. Let's also add a set color module, by the way, and connect the color zero one. one Oh, and nothing happens because the set color of a lifetime is set to overwrite. We need to change it to multiply. And that's it, here we go. I believe the lifetime is a little bit too long. I'm gonna shrink it to 0 0.3, 0 0.8, maybe less. 
you basically need to adjust these values until it feels right. But that's basically it. One last thing we can do is copy the glow and call it impact glow. Set the delay mode to delay before loop, connect the impact delay. Copy the set position while holding control, drag it right here and connect the impact offset. And that's it, we have a glow at the end of our lightning, it looks really nice, looks really punchy actually. It really has a nice feeling. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please smash the subscribe button and leave a like. And if you want to get your hands on all of these lightning strikes and even more, everything is available on my Patreon page and on my website gabrielaguiapro.com. These videos are made possible thanks to the amazing support of my patrons. You guys are amazing and help me keep the channel running. A big thank you goes to the top tier patrons which are Aaron, Alexis Lutran, David Crew, Donny Trona, Goblin Plague, Imara SPC, Hostile Mars Game, Josh McCormick, Kojo Opuni, Lars Martin, Liu Chang Chang, Mirko Zibirt, Oitsk, Pandora Toolbox, Regan Neidu, TK, Toodless, Victor Nathan, VR Paul, Young Chin, and Yukio Kuroto. I really do appreciate the support guys and thanks everyone for watching, hope to see you in the next video.